When we think about lightning, we usually think about the points where it strikes the ground, and maybe the vertical channels that extend up to the clouds. But actually, this is just the tip of a very large iceberg that is hiding within the cloud. We just don't see it because the clouds get into the way. Lightning is usually quite small. It's usually limited by the size of the thunderstorm that it occurs in. And sometimes, we can actually get very large thunderstorms. And when this happens, the lightning flashes also can be quite large. In fact, in some of the thunderstorms that we see in the Great Plains, they are very large organized systems, we can get lightning flashes that extend for hundreds of miles, and these are what we call mega flashes. Mega flashes are notoriously difficult to record, especially from the ground. Because of how large and how rare they are, you'd have to put your instrument in just the right place at just the right time to have a chance at even measuring a portion of the mega flash. The advantage that we have looking from space is that we have a large field of view. We can image a large portion of the Earth all at the same time. We recently detected two new lightning flashes that beat the previous records for lightning flash extent and lightning flash duration. The new longest lightning mega flash extended over a distance of 477 miles between roughly Dallas, Texas and New Orleans, Louisiana. While the longest duration mega flash occurred in the La Plata Basin between Argentina and Uruguay and lasted for 17.1 seconds. Normal lightning has a typical distribution of flash size and flash energy that we use as the basis for our guidance on lightning safety and engineering standards. The problem with mega flashes is that they break a lot of these rules. For example, in the case of public safety, a common set of guidance is the 30-30 rule, which uses the time difference between when you see the flash of light and hear the clap of thunder in order to gauge how far the lightning is and whether it poses a threat. The problem with mega flashes is that they tend to occur from over the horizon, from storms that you can't even see at your particular location. Not only that, but they tend to produce multiple cloud-to-ground strikes along their paths. And these strikes are often of the positive polarity, which are particularly damaging and are also prone to igniting fires. So even though lightning mega flashes are very rare, they are individually impactful as well, and this is why we care about them.